Welcome back here for an all new edition of AD and DT. We shifted gears by giving you Dolphin Dive early and flipped it for AD and DT this week with Athletics Director Bob Beretta of Lemoyne College and myself, Dan Tortora, AKA DT. This is part of our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership, bringing you your Lemoyne Dolphins during Dolphin Time every Wednesday throughout the year at 9 a.m. Eastern Time and the bonus coverage that we bring as well. So as always, Bob, welcome. Thanks very much, Dan. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And this is a very special time for us. I can't believe that it's been almost a calendar year, but year one of our multimedia marketing partnership with the Lemoyne Dolphins came to a, a close at the end of this month, and we can now proudly announce that we are heading into year two together. That's right. And so I have to ask you why, and I'm doing it in front of you all, but why, <laughs> why year two in your opinion? Because I'm extremely honored and humbled and appreciative of even getting an opportunity to work with Lemoyne and in this past year I feel like we did a lot but we barely scratched the surface so I'm hungry but you know obviously you're the other side of this decision so. Well Dan uh, first of all we're thrilled to have uh, the opportunity to partner with, with DT Broadcasting again. I think that uh, the partnership is, is everything that you look for in a strategic alliance. You, you want to find someone that uh, that you're aligned with, with your values and, and your philosophy and, and you believe in their product and they believe in your product and I think we found a perfect partner to help tell the story of our 385 student athletes but beyond that really the, the mission of, of this institution itself and you have great passion for telling that story and great talent for telling that story and uh, I feel like we have just begun to scratch the surface. We have much business unfinished Mm -hmm. And uh, th this will just take the next step towards covering some of that ground. And I, and I think that when it comes to you and I being cut from the same cloth, no matter what we do, we could be five, ten years down the road, have told a thousand stories, and you'll be texting me going, hey, what about this? Mm -hmm. And I'll say, hey, Bob, what about, what about that angle? Or maybe we could do this or go to this event, because we're always hungry to continue to tell the story and I want to thank you for that because really shortly after you came to Lemoyne as the athletics director, we had this conversation at the hiring of Mary Grimes and Gina Castelli introduced us. And, and to me, Gina is a very good person who just knows and she's known me for such a long time and I could see it in her eyes that day. She's like, you need to meet Bob. Yeah. And, and if not for that encounter and that opportunity, we wouldn't be here today. So I think, you know, it plays to what I always consider the most important thing and what I do is building relationships, networking, and finding like-minded people who really will put the work in and have the faith and the community base and the desire to see each other succeed. Because I think the biggest thing about climbing the mountain is at some point we got to grab the arm of each other. And I, you know, from day zero, was impressed by you and sitting down with you and you believed in the mission and the vision of what a multimedia marketing partnership is which opened the door to other universities and colleges so you know I'm very grateful that you know you saw a vision with what I'm doing and you continue to see that because I'm not just saying this for you know broadcast speak you know I I love the fact that I know on those days where I'm like gosh I feel like I'm doing it by myself that I can text you and you've been to 13 events in three hours yeah. and so I, I know that you're putting that in and it really is a, a perfect partnership and, and I'm grateful I'm very grateful well so, so are we I, again I think it's a it's a perfect relationship for us we value the work that you do we value your passion and, and we we feel like you align perfectly with our mission you know and, and that is always to espouse the the academics piece first that will always be our primary mission here yeah at, at Lemoyne, advance the institutional mission, and that's academics first. And then we have a story to tell in athletics that also helps advance that mission. We feel like we have a platform, and your platform helps us amplify that messaging and those those uh, great stories we have to tell of our student athletes. So for us, we're, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to extend this partnership for uh, another year, and I look forward to working closely with you. And we have an awful lot of stories to tell and I think some exciting times ahead for Lemoyne Athletics and, and we couldn't be more excited to be able to walk down that path alongside you. No, and I, I appreciate that. I mean, my dad went here and, you know, it's, it says a lot that when you and I were walking campus together for the first time, Bryant Perdomo was there and you said, oh, hey, I want to introduce you to, and as you pointed to him, he came over, he's like, Dan! So, yeah. 
uh, from CMS and, and having Brian a couple of years before when we got to uh, talk. And then as the men's tennis team got advanced to their first nationals, I was watching the game with Brian. So yeah. it's, it's a small world. It's a beautiful world. I know it means a lot to my dad. And, and I said I, I never went to school here, but I feel like a dolphin. You know, and, and I've been treated that way. So from the student athletes to the coaches, the administration, Dr. Linda Lamira, who is just a ball of energy and fun mm -hmm. and just a good. I told her, I said, you really need to understand they don't make presidents like you. Like I have, I need you to see and, and know that when you walk through a door and somebody's going, hey, and she like pulls the red carpet out, the green carpet out for you. Right. You know, uh, Dr. Linda Lamira, thank you for the incredible uh, kindness, generosity of your time, uh, everything that you say you are, and people say you are, you're better. And so I think, you know, for me, I know that the leadership of knowing you and knowing her gives me so much to be grateful for. And you're the type of people that if you say a kind word about me, that goes in a box somewhere else because you're the type of reputable people that you want to impress. You want people to feel like, okay, if they like it, then we're doing something right. So as much as you say nice things about me, I think the community needs to know to have you is saying a lot about this institution and this college. And Dr. Linda Lamira, I mean, if you want to find somebody that will jump in the trenches and go to battle with you, there is no student body around the country that has a better leader. So, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, it's very easy for me to do what I do. I don't even have to think about it because of the coaches that you hire, the student athletes that you have, the administration, and the leadership. And, and with you and, and Linda, it's fun. It's fun and it's invigorating and on a day where I have no energy and I'm tired and you feel like you've been beaten down by waves, a dolphin swims up next to you and goes, we can go one more mile and it's usually you or Linda or both. So, thank you. Well, uh, leadership starts at the top and President Lamira is a fa fantastic role model for us all. Her en energy level is unmatched. It's hard to keep up with her on a daily basis, <laughs> but she is in the trenches with us, and she was one of the big reasons why I decided that I, I wanted to take on this journey and this challenge here at LeMoyne to work alongside someone um, who has vision, who has uh, support for athletics, understands where athletics fits in the institutional mission, and really cares, genuinely cares about our coaches and our staff, but also our student athletes, and there's no one in a country, I think, that has a deeper passion for their students than, than Dr. Lamira. And we're blessed to have her at, at the head of our, uh, of our army here at, at LeMoyne, and um, she, she sets the tone for us all. Yeah, you know, and it's been a great experience to see in this year one of our multimedia marketing partnership, which is exclusive to Dan Tortora Broadcast Media and Wake Up Call with LeMoyne. And we have had so many stories we've had uh, different hirings that we've gone through and I've gotten to it's funny how you jump in and you say okay where are we gonna go and and you can attest to this being in athletics for over three decades you don't know when those hirings are gonna come and I mean we have in less than a calendar years time we have had a bunch of different hirings we have had postseason success we have had the spring season of multiple teams advancing. We have had record-setting years for men's and women's athletics. And on top of all of that, no big deal, a reclassification and realignment conversation of a potential of going from Division Two back to Division One. So much has gone on. Did you imagine, when you put that binder together and all of the things that you've done in your own personal research, that in less than a calendar year, you and I would have spoken about everything that we've talked about, which in 10 years would have been a tall task because on top of all of that, NIL, transfer portal, pandemic. So in 10 months, Bob and I have had a pretty pretty light load. <laughs> so. yeah, it really is interesting <laughs> if you look back and you review the past 10 months or past, for me now, it's been 13 months, mm -hmm. uh, 14 months on the ground here at Lemoyne. And you see the ground that we've covered, it, it's, it's spectacular and, and I think that with all with a singular mindset of trying to advance our student athletes experience but from coaching we, we turned over almost a third of our head coaches which is an awful lot in, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a calendar year we hired four new coaches and, and we feel really excited about the direction of all those uh, programs that they've that they've taken on uh, you talk about academic success we, we achieved at a very high level we talked about that 
in our last session, it, we, we achieved at a very high level both in the classroom and on the playing field. Seven teams qualified for the NCAAs in this past year, six in the spring. Amazing. And record setting performances in the classroom as well. Yeah. And then this overlying topic, which will continue to churn for several months, I'm sure, reclassification. And it has dominated our time really since January, maybe in a little more of a low key type of environment where we've, we've talked internally with our president and our, our, our top stakeholders. And now, really since February and March, it's become more public and, and more active. And, and we will continue that process throughout the summer. Yeah, you know, and, and there's so much that we've gotten to speak on with this. We got to do the exclusive first conversation about realignment and reclassification, the exclusive update, and the exclusive update to the update. <laughs> And all of that and more can be found on the Lemoyne tab of wakeupcalldt.com. You have your own page, a site within the site on wakeupcalldt.com with an archive of our dolphin dive stories with student athletes administration, future dolphins, uh, alumni as well as, as our coaches, and then, of course, our AD and DT conversation. And, and I want to thank you for letting me dive into this world of reclassification and realignment because it has been very exciting and I have, I don't know if you know, I mean, knowing me, I feel like you probably know this without me saying, but since you've opened that door, I've been like low key doing my own kind of, and I've been doing a commissioner central series. I've been talking with commissioners and executive directors around the country about their specific strength and evolution of their conferences, as well as the grander picture of all collegiate athletics. Not every conference feels like they have a seat at the table on wake up call. They do. And so I have uh, really taken some time to see where their head's at to, you know, remind them that uh, there's a great old school here in Central New York. So it's been fun to see the two bond at kind of the perfect timing to see where are the Division I commissioners' heads at and where is your head at as an institution at Lemoyne? Yeah, you know, I think from, from a national landscape standpoint i think we're going to see a lull regionally and nationally here during the summer months we at one point we felt like it might be uh, on a little more aggressive timeline mm -hmm. but but it seems like people are a little tired from the past year and everyone needs a little bit of a time to take a take a breath what happened yeah i know <laughs> like just all the things you just mentioned right especially if you're a conference commissioner they should be able to dive right back in turn the page and begin anew yeah <clears throat> but it seems like there's going to be a little bit of a period here over the next several weeks where there'll be some quiet. Yeah. And then as we approach the next academic year in August, September, you'll start to see some discussion and some rumblings and some movements. Now, that's not to say that we're taking that time here at LeMoyne. We're not. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we are moving very aggressively with our discernment process. Again, don't, we do not know. We, I can't sit here and tell you that our decision is going to be to reclassify to Division One or to... to remain in Division Two and some proud members of the Northeast 10 Conference. But we are having discussions and we're having very deep discussions. We have a committee that's been formed, an ad hoc committee on athletics reclassification, which, which I chair along with our former board chair, Bob Reclitus, and several members of the board of trustees on that committee, several members of our key faculty, our provost, our president, several VPs. Yeah. And we meet twice a week and we're discussing every topic that we feel like needs to be um, thought through very thought, uh, very very thoughtfully, very deliberately, yeah. and we have very deep conversations about how you name the topic, whether it's enrollment enhancement or whether it's uh, student activity fees or whether it's something along the lines of how a Division One transition would impact the makeup of our composition of our classes and the makeup of our student body at LeMoyne. How it would be perceived? Where would the money come from? All the money, hopefully, that would come from friends of, of LeMoyne that right now currently uh, might not be actively participating in our annual or annual fund or, or capital. So all these topics that we're talking, we're trying to approach from, from many different angles, and we'll have these meetings ongoing throughout the summer. Our goal is to hopefully come to some sort of conclusion on what is best for the institution by early August, yeah. draft up a position paper that outlines all these thoughts and then begin to socialize our decision. And at the same time, I mean, we've had conferences, uh, conversations with conference commissioners, let them know we're, where we are in the process, that we're 
strongly considering a reclassification. Yeah. We've made no bones about that. And we've been very transparent. Our president, Dr. Lumira, has talked to our current commissioner. I went to our AD meetings earlier this month and talked in front of all the ADs about our current process and that we are considering a reclassification that I did not have the answer, but it, to, to be completely honest, I wanted people to understand that we are considering that. Yeah. And, and I think this process, again, will we'll take us through the summer, hopefully be run a parallel path with the next wave of realignment, if you will, yeah. and, and hopefully be positioned well for whatever decision we make. You know, you said that when you went to these annual meetings, you, you addressed it with the other ADs of the other institutions of the Northeast 10. Why was it important for you to be transparent instead of what some schools choose to do, which is make a very quiet decision? Yeah, Dan, you know, I think that speaks to who we are as an institution, who I am, what I believe in personally. I, I try to be as transparent as possible. I, I'd like to let people know where they stand, whether it's a, a coach, a staff member, or a colleague. I didn't want to sit in that room and, and be disingenuous as we talked about membership and future potential members yeah. and what our conference composition could look like without sitting in that room w with athletic directors. And it's strange, you know, I, I started and I still, in my mind, feel like maybe I'm the newest AED in the room and I'm not suddenly quickly climbing the list of seniority. There are a lot of new faces in that room that have, that have taken on AD jobs within the NE10 yeah. since I started here at LeMoyne. So we're really building those relationships and I, and I don't feel like it's the best way to, to, to build a relationship without being communicative and, and yeah. transparent. So I just felt it very important to lay our cards out on the table, let my colleagues know that hey, uh, we're thrilled to be members of the NE10, but it's an institutional decision that we're looking at from many different angles, and we're gonna consider reclassification, and we're gonna strongly consider remaining in the Northeast 10 Conference, but I, I, I just feel like that's the only way that I know is to be able to look someone in the eye and talk to them and be honest with them, because I would want the same from them, whether it's good news or bad, yeah. and then we can move forward, and I can build trust, and, and, and hopefully you build a little bit of equity that way. Here with AD and DT, Athletics Director of Lemoyne College, Bob Beretta, and myself, Dan Tortora, as we celebrate moving into year two together of our exclusive multimedia marketing partnership and speak on all the things that are going on. How did the ADs take your message? Yeah, that's a great question, Dan, because you never know. You know, you, you sit in that room and, and you're trying to build relationships. But again, I, I think it's all about trust, mm -hmm. and, and they understand that these decisions aren't made in a vacuum. They're not made in the athletic department. They're not, they're not made in the AD's office. They're made at a much higher level institutionally and from a strategic standpoint beyond uh, the president's level, the board of trustees, and it's really the vision and direction folks have for their specific institution. Yeah. I think that the AD's received it well. I, I think they appreciated the fact that we were transparent and we did tell them exactly, hey, this is where we're at, yeah. and, and uh, we could stay, we could leave. I think people are disappointed that you might leave because we have really strong relationships, and that's a tribute to Matt Bassett and his team that, that have been members of the NE10 for many, many years before I got here uh, at the Heights. And yeah. they've built those strong relationships and strong bonds, and, and it's a tribute to our, to our leadership and our student athletes. They've performed really well. And, I feel like Lemoyne is one of the marquee members of the Northeast 10 Conference on the field and off. And certainly ADs would, would hate, hate to lose a member like that, much like I would hate to lose a member like that. And, and we did. We lost Stonehill, and Stonehill was a, a great partner, and, and their athletic director has become a, a good friend. And I hate to see them leave, but by the same token, we understand that it's a decision they made which they feel is in the best interest of, of their institution. But to be able to sit in the room and and look those folks in the eyes, I, I think is very important. Yeah, you know, and, and to look at that, uh, I would imagine that having that conversation with the fellow ADs at your annual meeting had to be tough because they already know that Stonehill's leaving and heading for the Northeast Conference where Mary Mack is also and both coming from the NE10. So when they hear you, it, what you kind of say, hey, we don't know, but it could happen. Was it tough because they're still trying to rip off the Stonehill Band-Aid because of the situation you're in and Stonehill's competing as early as this 2022-23 season, they'll be competing in the fall. So was that kind of tougher than just approaching it as 
Lemoyne saying, hey, nobody's... Dan, and I think that there is a little, that it stings a little more, right? That it hits a little harder when you just lost a, a key member and, and now you're faced with potentially losing another key member. We are talking about attracting new members into the Northeast 10 Conference, but it's not easy. You know, from an inventory standpoint, what we're looking for, what, what schools align with the NE 10's mission and, and the other institutions that comprise the NE 10. So it, it, it's like a puzzle. It needs to be a perfect fit. Yeah. And when you have a perfect piece, it's like business, right? It, it's so much easier to retain business than attract new business. So you, you hate to lose a partner that you value and that, is, that matches so well in all elements. And the fact that now another one might be leaving, yeah, it's a little harder to sit in a room and tell the other ADs that have a difficult thing that I'd like to discuss with you all. Yeah. But I also think it's a lot easier than to not tell them and then they read about something in, in a media outlet and then your personal relationships, right, your integrity is called into question. And that's one thing I would never want for Lemoyne is to have our institution, our leadership, or the athletic director ever to have their integrity called into question. The commissioner, you said, obviously, you want to have that conversation with her. How, how do you have that conversation? And how has she taken the state of kind of, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a done deal and it, that you're saying is not a done deal that you're leaving. So it's this kind of state where you're suspended in reality of where is LeMoyne going to be. So what is the conversation like with the commissioner of the NU10? Well, again, Dr. Lemura has a great relationship with Julie Rupert. Mm -hmm. she, Linda was the person that uh, oversaw the president's group this past year. So she had tremendous lines of communication with, with Commissioner Rupert and told her all along, once we began this dialogue back in January, hey, Julie, we're considering this, we're gonna look at it, and then when we decided to bring in our consultant and execute a full feasibility study, provided her an update to say, hey, this might be getting a little more real, we're gonna do a full-fledged feasibility study, and, and now we're having these lengthy internal discussions with uh, an ad hoc committee that, that have made up of very, very important people here at Lemoyne and, and, and really not on campus, folks that help lead our institution. So yeah. I, I think it's a difficult conversation at first, but again, along the same lines as, as me with the ADs, it started with the president at this level, with, with Commissioner Rupert, and I've had conversations with, with Julie, as well as at this most recent ADs meeting where I pulled her aside and provided a little bit of an update on kind of where we're at and where we're headed and never an easy conversation but again it's relational and it, it's building those trust factors and at least it, when she hears something now from Dr. Lamira or from the AD at Lemoyne that she she can feel like okay I know exactly where they stand I'm not going to get blindsided they're up, updating me I may not like the end product but at least I know where we stand every step of the way. And while you're in the NE10, you obviously want to keep those bonds strong if and when you decide to stay. And at, the, and at the same time, you know, we've talked about the MAC, the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, the MAAC, and we've talked about the Northeast Conference of the NEC and that they would be good fits for Lemoyne if Lemoyne were to reclassify. So how do you do the dance of dancing with the partner that you came with but knowing that you might leave with a different dance partner. Yeah, I, I think you just, again, you just have to be very uh, open, but you also have to be true to where your feet are right now. And our feet are firmly planted in the NE10. We may be firmly planted in the NE10 for the next 25 years, and, and we want to maintain those relationships, and we don't want to have one foot out the door when we don't know that we're going to be leaving. We, we might stay. It's very, very well we could stay. So I, I think we do the best we can uh, where we are on that given day and every topic. We, we invest with people, we invest in dollars, we invest with all of our resources in, in where we currently associate, and that is in the NE10. By the same token, we have to explore, and that was really kind of the, the theme that we used when we began this journey into the possibility of reclassification. We're going to explore. We're going to explore all different areas here and see if this is something that would make sense for the institution. And by so doing, and so doing, we need to be able to let 
conference commissioners know that we are going through this process and that we might be open for a conversation, for dialogue, for potential reclassification. So there's a little bit of, of nuance to it. Mm -hmm. I think every athletic director, every president, every commissioner has a different style about how they go about these things. Yeah. For, for us, it's, it's tried to be very open, very candid, without being overt, but allowing the conference commissioners at the Division One level that, that we could have interest if, if they start to consider adding schools and potentially reclassifying schools, that LeMoyne should be part of that discussion, that we would like to be part of that discussion. We don't know exactly where we stand right now, but we are going through a very diligent process. And while we're doing that, we're also going to remain as dedicated and committed to the NE10 as we possibly can while we're members of the NE10. And again, that very well could be for the next 25 years. Do you make phone calls to Division One commissioners? Do they make them to you, or, or does it happen in both ways? I, I think there's, again, a little nuance to the process. Uh, we have a consultant that, that we've been working with, and that consultant lives in that space 365 days a year. So his name is Russell Wright. His, his his uh, company is Collegiate Consulting. They're one of the leaders in the industry in this space. So he's having these conversations on a daily basis, and I think he was able to initially reach out to those conference commissioners. He reached out to us. I mean, this process began around Christmas when I received a call from Russell, and, and he said, hey, have you considered reclassifying? Because I'm, I'm having conversations, and Lemoyne's name continues to come up as a possible candidate for membership in some Division One conferences is something that LeMoyne would consider. That's how this process started, in all candid, uh, in, all, in all transparency. And, you know, initially we resisted and we thought about it a little bit longer and discussed it and then in January decided, okay, let's, let's begin a little deeper dive. Let's take a little deeper dolphin dive into this and, and see if it might make sense. And so we've gone through this process very deliberately. Wherever we fall at the end of this discernment, I, I think folks will be able to say, we will be able to say with great honesty that we were very deliberate in this process. Yeah. We're trying to be as inclusive as possible. and uh, No stone is, left unturned. No stone left unturned and, and not a rush to judgment. And that's really... That's part of, of who we are. We want to make sure we're very thoughtful and contemplative in this process, considering all different angles, and whatever decision we make, we're going to feel really good about that it's in the best interest of this institution. You are a top-tier Division II institution currently. What, in your opinion, would make you a viable Division I institution? I think we're viable right now at the Division One level based on who we are and what we stand for, based on the mission of LeMoyne, based on the product, what, what our student athletes accomplish in the classrooms, what our student athletes accomplish on the playing fields, and most importantly, the fact that our student athletes go on to become great contributors in all sectors of society. They go out and accomplish great things. They go out and set the world on fire, as St. Ignatius said, and, and we feel really good about uh, our ability to, to mold the future leaders of, of our country and, and that lead in all these different private sectors and public sectors of life. So I feel like we, our mission fits very well with the Division I mantras of conferences that we've discussed. And our product really is, is our student athletes, our, our students, those that graduate, that earn their diplomas each year and go out and represent this unbelievable institution in, in different areas and in, in different components of, of our community both here in central New York, but also worldwide. Did you see, when you came to visit campus, was there an air or a feeling, even before you took the job, that this could be an institution that you aided to Division One? Did you see that in the beginning? Well, during the process, when I was interviewed, there was some discussion about the next athletic director, we're going to want to take a look at alignment conference alignment, divisional alignment. Are we in the right division? Are we in the right conference? There was strong talk at that time about looking at Division three, and maybe we would fit better as a Division three institution, potentially Division one, but there was just a general unrest in where we were. Okay. And so I knew that 
we, this was going to be a topic of conversation. I thought it might be two or three years down the road. I didn't think it would be <laughs> two or three months in, into, into my term as athletic director, but I did think that we'd be having these uh, explorations, if you will, I, and I wasn't convinced that it was always going to be Division One. so I didn't come to LeMoyne thinking, oh, well, I'm going to go to LeMoyne and we're going to move to Division One. and uh, my ba background's in Division One at West Point for 30 plus years. It wasn't that at all. I, you know, we went in with a very open mind and said, hey, we might look at Division Three. What makes the most sense for this institution? And that's really what I was focused on was I, I want to take a look at what is the best play for Lemoyne as a college, as a community, yeah. whether that's Division Three, whether that's status quo in Division Two or, or Division One. And so I didn't come in with a predisposed notion of that. I did understand that there was going to be some conversation and, and we were going to take a look at this. I'm thrilled to be able to, to be part of a very deep dive. It wasn't something that we've done so far in a very peripheral way. We're, we're scratching the surface. We're diving deep into the topics of discussion. So mm -hmm. I feel like whatever we come back with, it's it's going to be a place from we've, d we've done great research and taken in many different perspectives and then this is the direction, this is the vision, this is the future of LeMoyne College and LeMoyne Athletics. An ad hoc committee meeting a couple times a week and doing this with the major players from all different avenues in connection with LeMoyne to make the right decision for LeMoyne College. You've been so gracious and candid in answering all my questions. We do a thing on my show called Rapid Fire. I'm going to take you off the hot seat and just throw me on it. Yeah. You can ask me any two questions as we've known each other for almost a year now, about a year now, so you can ask me anything in the world, I have to answer it. Okay, the first is, should LeMoyne reclassify to Division One or stay at Division Two? Well, I would tell you that I think that LeMoyne, in my mind, and in, in before this conversation even came up, I could see LeMoyne as a Division One institution. I've never seen you know, when I look at Division One, Two, and Three, and I look at the caliber of people that I get to work with at all different divisions, this is a school that I think should be regarded at the highest level. It's the leadership. It's the, like you said, the work in the classroom. It's it's the facilities. It's the community. It's how you go about your business. It's the fact that you know I got to help out for the first time ever with Giving Day and see over a million dollars raised in in 24 hours. I have. I've always been able to make the argument that this could be a Division I institution because of the people, because of how you hold yourself, and I've worked with so many Division I institutions that I don't think push themselves like you do. And I think there's people in Division I that might rest in their laurels, and I don't see that from here. I, I, I believe that if you stay in Division II, then you should be holding the torch for Division Two for the whole country. I think if you go to Division One, then it will be something that won't surprise me, but I will be not low key. I will be very loud and like I told you so. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, I think you definitely have what it takes to do it, have what it takes to compete in it, and I think it would be an honor and a tribute to the city and community that I grew up in if and when you make that decision. And if you stay in Division Two, I will always think of this as a Division One caliber institution. Excellent. Second question: We're going to break for a little bit, right, before for the summer. Yeah. What What's the goal for Dan during the summer? What What's What do you, When we get back together, what will have you wanted to accomplish the most? Bob is giving me thirty days off, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I probably won't be taking it off because no, of the fact that not at all. there's a, a lot of stuff about Lemoyne that I don't want to leave unturned. So. I would say uh, to you guys, uh, nothing will change probably, but what do I want to achieve in the summer? Well, I, I've started a thing called, as I mentioned, the Commissioner Central Series, and my goal is to speak with every single conference that will allow me to. And so, you know, we've started heavily with Division One, and we're, you know, we've opened doorways to Division Two and Division Three as well. I want to hear from everybody. I have heard from them that, as I said before, they don't all feel like they have a seat at the table. If they do, they, some of them feel like they might have a muzzle. And I want to change that. I came up with this idea last year during the pandemic and then uh, and upgraded it to the Com Commissioner Central Series where I say to each conference, tell me about you 
and then give me your window into the world. So I want to know who you are individually, and I want to know where you stand with all the questions that every leader has to answer. And there is no group of five in my book. There's no power of five in my book. There's no you play football, you don't play football. So I'm living in a world where every league, every conference, every commissioner slash executive director, if they want it, has a place to speak. And this isn't just the SEC and the Big Ten talking. This is the Pioneer Football League. This is the Missouri Valley Football Conference. This is the Northeast Conference. You know, this is the Big South. And I love the fact that I get to, as we always talk about, don't have to, we get to have these conversations. So I'm going heavy. It's a perfect time for me to do this when people are like, what's going on in sports? And I'm like, well, if you want to hear from dang near every leader I can get to, it's here. And even the NCAA doesn't do this. So I am making history. I am building my brand. I'm looking at where else I can attack. We just added Audible and Amazon Music to TuneIn, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts, MixLR, Podbean, and ways you can get us. I am heavily looking into a lot of different areas that we can reach out to. I'm also looking at expansion of my show because I ceremoniously daily go beyond 11 o'clock. So there's a basically every time I wear my britches, I outwear my britches right. in a good way. So I think as you are expanding, I am expanding. And uh, Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora is buckle up, baby, because we don't stop. Uh, Super Powered Pop is back on the air as well for our entertainment show. Dan on Disney is back on the air. Comic Book Trails is coming to a community near you. So what am I going to do with the next 30 days? I'm going to light the world on fire. As you always do. And, and you just summed up why we, we want to be partnered with DT Broadcast. We want to grow together, and I think that there's a tremendous opportunity for growth here in the next several months ahead, so thanks very much. And I'm excited, and the American Athletic Conference, they know it, their ADs know it, the ACC knows it, so there's a, a lot of work to be had and a lot of discussions to be done, and the, the kind words are a testament to my grandparents and to my parents and how I was raised and to the God I believe in, uh, as I always say, I will take 1% of the credit for my work. I give the rest to God, and uh, I give a lot of it to where I come from and, and, and what, I, what I do coming from. Uh, I just live in a different world, and I like my bubble, and, and I love it very much. So I'm going to become more physically fit as I challenge myself in the last year and a half before this. I'm going to continue to walk my dog and play with her. Shout out to Lily. And I am going to be a better best friend, a better son, a better person. Hopefully someday a good husband and a good father. Maybe great if, if, I, so, uh, if I have that opportunity. And uh, really when it comes down to it, Bob, I am going to take these relationships and I'm going to love them. And as you know, on and off the air, uh, you said to me, We'll, we'll be with you as long as you'll have us. And I say, well, then get ready for the next 100 years. Yes. All for that. Absolutely. Bring on the next century. So I appreciate it as always. As always. Thanks. And we have to say it as we wear it. Fins up. Fins up. We'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much.